In today's episode, we discuss the quartet of family coasters that you probably know better as The Wildest Ride in the Wilderness! Welcome to Airtime Traveler. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Roller Coaster History Podcast. You are listening to Airtime Traveler. My name is Nathan Grace, and as always, I'm joined by my wife and lovely co host. Hey, I'm Haley Grace. And thank you for tuning in to episode 14 of the podcast. If this is your first time listening here at Airtime Traveler. We are going, you know, we dive into the individual history of roller coasters. I've been a roller coaster enthusiast for a long time, and my wife is a member of the GP, or, the general, right. or the general public. General so public. I'm here to share these histories with her, and she's here to make me uh, less boring. Make history fun. Because <laughs> let's um, admit it, everybody's like, oh, I like history. But why? <laughs> why? Yeah. What's wrong with history? It's boring, so I make it fun. <laughs> Did you not like history, like when no, you were in I school? No, I mean, maybe I just have a better taste in my mouth because I didn't like one of my history teachers, but um, it kind of always make, makes it or breaks it. So. Gotcha. Well, I think I'm a better history teacher than your your history teacher was. So yeah, <laughs> at least when it comes to roller coasters. <laughs> Um, if this is your first time listening, be sure to go and follow us on social media and give us, you know, you can follow us here on Spotify or wherever you might be listening so that you're updated every time, you know, we post a new episode. We've been posting park or uh, trip, re- trip reports from all the parks we've gone to. So we'll have a trip report coming out. I think next week we'll have a trip report from our trip to Hershey Park over the summer. So be sure to follow the podcast so that you'll be updated whenever we post those trip reports. And also we'll be, you know, doing airtime traveler every two weeks. So, um, I think that's all I've got to talk about. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think if there's been any news to talk about in the past couple of weeks. I, mean, I haven't I'm, seen any. Not anything specifically roller coaster related. I know there's been some amusement park things, but, um, uh, I mean, Disneyland raised their prices again this week. So uh, I did see that. <laughs> ridiculous i am sorry but like inflation only that like what's the word i'm looking for that excuse can only go so far well and it's i I, at this (laughs) point i don't know that disney is even using that as an excuse i think it's just they know they're still going to get people coming, so they can just keep jacking up the prices and the crowds aren't going to go away. I think Disney fans need to go on strike because it's ridiculous how It much... is, but the problem, that's the problem, is they never will. Yeah. They'll just keep bumping up the prices over and over and, uh, yeah. To the point that it's not going to be enjoyable because everybody's going to be worried about how much money they're spending. Or Well, what it's going to be is you're only going to get upper class people. That is going to be the only people Which that can go so to Disney sad. anymore. That's not what Walt wanted. Well, it's interesting because, you know, the Bob Shapek said, like, during, like, the whole Disney D23 was going on, they asked, like, why are we not bringing back season passes? And, you know, he... His whole thing was like, we want the family from Denver to be able to come to Disney, you know, even though they're only able to come every one, every four or five years, we want them to have a great of an experience as the people that come all the time. And it's like, well, if we keep jacking up the prices, none no of the families gonna... are going to be able to come. The well, only people think... that are going to come are the people that had the annual passes. Right. Well, I even think about, like, I mean, think about how many international people try to come to the parks. Like, there's a big group. Of people that try and make it, like, internationally. Like, you know, I mean, I've seen so many people from all around the world going around Epcot, Mm -hmm. you know, or Magic Kingdom. Like, there's tons of people there of those ethnicities. And it's like, they're not going to be able to afford it now. Yeah. It's it's tough. It's, I mean, clearly both of us are Disney fans. We've, you know, grown up with you know disney in our lives and going to disney world and 
but it's just tough. It's tough to see the Disney prices increasing faster than the money that we're making, which just, you know, every six months, Disney becomes less and less attainable for the everyday person. And, um, my goal is to be rich enough to go to Disney whenever we want. <laughs> well, that, and that will that, never happen. Well, that, so. that goal is becoming less and less of a reality. That's so. true. No, it's uh. true. I mean, honestly, I feel like the only people that they're going to be able to is like the wealthy or people that live in Florida and get like the discount of being a Florida resident. Right. Or like they, because they live close enough, they don't have to stay on resort. So that exactly. saves them some money. Exactly. You know. Well, on that note, today we're going to be talking about a coaster from Disney. Hey! <laughs> it's kind of... Wait, Disneyland or Disney World? Uh, yes. <laughs> Should I make guesses? Well, I mean, now that I've said both... Okay, you, you... is it Space Mountain? No. No, it's... <laughs> no, don't tell me. I want to guess. You Big Thunder. This, I was going to say, Big Thunder you really don't have that <laughs> many other guesses. <laughs> we are talking about Big Thunder Mountain hey. Railroad today. Now, pop quiz. Do you know how many Big Thunder Mountain Railroads there are? Oh, I should know this. Three. Is there three? So, t- so name them off. It's Disneyland, California, mm-hmm. Disney World, and I thought... It was either Shanghai or Tokyo. There is one in Tokyo, but you are also missing one. Is there one. Paris? Is there's Paris? one in Paris, too. Okay. So there's four Big Thunder Mountain Railroads. And I was so close. Come you on, were you're going to give me credit. You were really close. I was surprised. So, because I knew that there were at least four. I thought Shanghai had one until I like did the research for this episode, and that's when it dawned on me. I was like... Wait a minute, Shanghai Disney doesn't have Big Thunder Mountain, and they don't. It's so it's super weird. I don't know what the decision was behind that. I don't know why. Because there's five but... parks, right? There's. I mean, five five resorts, yes, and some of them have multiple parks, and so it's kind of convoluted. But basically, yes, there's Disneyland, Disney World, and then Tokyo, Shanghai, and Paris. So that's the it was like the I five. There was one in Hong Kong. Is oh great now am I getting all convoluted now? Is there no? It's Tokyo, Hong Kong, Shanghai. There's Paris, one in Hong Kong, isn't there? And California and Disney World. So wait, does the one does Disneyland Hong Kong? I guess doesn't have one either. Weird. So why is there? Why are there two Disney resorts that don't have a Big Thunder Mountain? Weird. Anyway. You're completely right. I totally forgot about Disneyland Hong Kong. So. Ha! I know my Disney. Well, I knew that's... <laughs> Haley's the Disney buff, and so I knew she was going to like this episode. We'll so grill you on it. Yeah, well, I can tell you about Big Thunder Mountain, but I clearly I forgot about Disneyland Hong Kong. Yeah. So we're going to talk about all four Big Thunder Mountains today. And mostly, I mean, we haven't really done foreign coasters unless they're directly tied to the history of another coaster. We're just kind of been focused on the U.S., um, but I mean, all four of them are so similar that it just kind of makes sense makes to sense. tell yeah. the story all together. So, so, uh, okay. So pop quiz question number two, which was the first Big Thunder Mountain? Disneyland California. Mm-hmm. Did you know that or are you just guessing? No, I knew you that. You didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So Disney. But I thought it was a trick question. So I was like. No. <laughs> yeah. You're right. So. So Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened at Disneyland in 1979, followed by the Magic Kingdom in 1980. So very close, actually. Um, Then Tokyo Disneyland was in 1987, and Disneyland Paris in 1992. Okay. Uh, Because of how old they are, they've never been in the Golden Ticket Awards. Yeah, that's no big deal. In the CoasterBot rankings, Disneyland's version currently ranks number 191 in the country. And Magic Kingdom ranks number 203 in the country. And then as far as how the four of them rank against each other, because the coaster bot rankings are international, but I when when I do my rankings, I, I filter it down just you know for the US. But I you know I pulled up their international rankings to see just how the four of them compare against each other. Generally speaking, pretty much everyone says the Disneyland Paris Big Thunder Mountain is the best of the four. 
So that one ranks, out of the 29 Disney coasters there are in the world, it ranks number five. And then Disneyland ranks number 11, Magic Kingdom number 12, and then Tokyo Disneyland number 16. Interesting. Yeah. So, so Paris has the best Paris one. Paris has the best one and the newest one. So, but, and we'll talk about why people generally like the Paris Because I've always one, heard so. the Disneyland California one is like super good. The Disneyland California one, and, and we'll go into the details of why those two are considered like mm. kind of better than the other two. Okay. But, um, yeah, we'll get into it, but that's generally the ranking. I'm so. always known to jump ahead, so I that's apologize. All right. That's that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so first of all, the name, just a review of the name. Okay. I mean, it's a classic name. It is classic. And, like, Disney's always been known for the the mountains, right? You get Space Mountain, mountains Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain. And I must go. <laughs> exactly, so. Um, How many days? Uh, what, I think it's 48 days. 48 till we days. <laughs> As of the day we're recording They're this. calling us. They're calling us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not excited. However, fun fact. So in Disneyland and Disney World, they're called Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. That's the full name of the coaster. But starting in 87 and then in 1992 when they opened the other ones, they're just called Big Thunder Mountain. So they took the railroad off of the name. Why? Just easier, I think. So, yeah. So they're just I called... I mean, we don't, don't really call it Big Thunder Mountain Railroad Yeah, here. exactly. Honestly, I would not be offended if they just changed it to Big Thunder Mountain. Because that's what everyone calls it anyway. Yeah. So, as it is, the name is so long that it's going to make the name of the podcast episode way longer than all the others. <laughs> Big so, Thunder Mountain Railroad. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Big so. Thunder Mountain Railroad. Uh, the logo, I mean, it's fine. I, you know, is. It's a Western font. Okay, like you this. showed me like the there's, little... There is lots of different... They, there's like the, the circle with the BTM. And, and I ne- have never seen that before. So when you showed it to me, I was like, <laughs> what is that? Which is funny because it's right above the entrance. No one notices it that I noticed. I notice a lot General of things that people... General <laughs> public doesn't know this. <laughs> General public probably doesn't even know Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Railroad. Everyone True. just calls it Big Thunder Mountain. So... Um, I won't get, we won't review, like, just getting into the whole review of the Ugh. paint scheme and all that, but it's just to, just to give me a quick 30 seconds on your opinion of Big Thunder Mountain. It's perfect. I love it. Like, when you get on the ride, it, it definitely feels like you're escaping into, like, the Red Rocks of Utah or, you know, Colorado. Like, they're just really pretty. Like, they just did a really good job, I think, the art team. Um, you know, to like splash down and see like the bones or like the steam popping up or, um, you know, just the different things that they, they added to this ride. I thought it was very well done. And like, you really don't see a lot of the, like the crowd, like, I feel like they try and like enclose you a lot into this ride to kind of get that full experience. Mm-hmm. So I love it. I think they did a great job. Yeah. I think terrain coasters are a lot of fun where like, you know, you're just diving in and out of trees and like you're falling the land. Like obviously coasters that aren't terrain coasters, like steel vengeance, feared through two five. Those are a lot of fun too, but like yeah. a good terrain coaster is always a lot of fun. And so I love the way that you're just like diving in and out of the rock work. Oh and, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So. Well, and it's interesting because they built all this rock work for this ride. So oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, you saying it's a terrain coaster and then like, you know, flowing with the land, they make it blend in with the land. And mm-hmm. I just think it's very cool. Yeah. Cause even oh. like around the actual attraction, they kind of, make it blend in with the mm-hmm. attraction so yeah. so did you know i one thing i learned um is i was kind of reading about the attraction and the i knew they had a backstory because everything at disney has a backstory of course it does but i didn't really know what it was like i just kind of assumed it's just no oh, it's a mine or whatever apparently the actual like the it's more in depth than this but basically the idea is we're going into this mine. There's like this guy that's like the leader. I don't remember his name, but he's sending us into the mine to go find the gold. But the mine basically doesn't want to. It's like a haunted mine. It's like keeping oh, us weird. from 
from mining the gold. I didn't know this. And so, and like the, in the original description of the ride, it basically said that like the trains are basically taking off on their own. That like the trains themselves are haunted. So it's it's like I would have never. I would have never it. right. I would have never said that it was like a haunted ride, but. Like it's kind of like a kind of cool thing ghost about it, town western thing. Yeah, or? exactly. Yeah, interesting. So, so and the, there's one of these in particular we'll get into that tells the story more in depth. That's kind of cool that we'll we'll talk about. So oh, okay. So here's the park's description. I'm using Disneyland's description just because it was the original. It says, oh, it, it even says here, streak through a haunted gold mine aboard a speeding train on this thrilling coaster style ride. So right on the website it talks about a haunted gold mine, which Again, was never like my thought, but in hindsight, it makes sense. Right. But I, I never thought about it as haunted until I really dove into the details for this episode. So, all right. Customer reviews oh, are favorite. Yes. Here's the problem. Is and, it going to... Well, here, here's the thing. With Disney rides, it's a good problem to have. There is so, so much Many about rides. the Disney rides because... There's th- so I didn't have to look up any newspaper articles just because people are always writing hi- the histories of these rides. Like it's really easy to find all the stories about these rides because it's just so well documented because it's Disney. That also means there's 2,400 customer reviews on this ride, oh so there was Lord. no way for me to get through all of them. But right. I picked out some, some that, that I could. So so here's one star. I can't believe how only one person can make hundreds of people waste two to three hours in line. Yesterday morning, a red-haired lady only allowed people from the Lightning Lane to do the ride. It was so bad, she let pass more than 50 people from the Lightning Lane at once and only four to five people from the non-Lightning Lane. We were shocked. After an hour and a half in line, another lady took the job and our line started to run smoothly. After one and a half hours of waiting, the ride wasn't the big deal. (laughs) Okay, when you go to a Disney park <laughs> and you don't buy the Lightning Lane or now Genie Plus. Well, the, the Genie Plus and Lightning Lane, they're kind okay, of... Okay, but uh, yes, um, yeah, that so. is what you're going to get. Like uh, this, this, The way she describes it does seem so a little aggressive on the Lightning Lane. Four months ago, lane, that was like summertime. Well, and it would have been right around... Well, actually, I guess it's probably been about a year that Genie Plus and Lightning Lane's been a thing, huh? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, like, the, honey... Get a grip. I mean, you're going to be in that kind of line for any kind mm-hmm. of ride there. Especially in the summer. Yeah. I'd, my favorite part of that was, like, the ride wasn't the big deal. Not wasn't a big deal. Wasn't the big deal. <laughs> Dear heavens. Okay. Next one. star. One. Ouch. This ride is not for big people. Why is it called a big oh thunder gosh. mountain? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Also, some person came back and said he went through five routes in all of Disney parks and escaped on Grand Fiesta Tour. First, the car that gave us the ride snapped in half when we sat down. It was so embarrassing. Everyone started calling us the two big pigs. After they gave us a new car, we rode the ride, but the track went backwards. I have no idea what this person is talking about. <laughs> this <laughs> did you did any of that make sense to no. you? No. None of that made sense to you. After the big drop, the G forces were so strong I tumbled Someone off the ride. Made this up. I have don't cut. Uh, uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Skip this. This isn't even worth looking at. One star waited three hours for a thirty second ride. Wasn't that great? Oh Definitely gosh. not a ten out of ten. No one understands. Well, first of all, it's not a thirty second ride. It's over three minutes long. I want to go to the people and shake them. <laughs> Like, I seriously do. Haley's personally offended by these reviews. Oh, my gosh. Move on. <laughs> One star. My son was not ready. Great ride. I loved it. Why did you rate it one star if you loved it, but your son wasn't ready? I don't understand. Okay, keep going. One star. Thought I was going to die. That should be a good thing. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Two stars. I don't understand why this ride has good reviews. It is one of the few roller coasters that's at Walt Disney World, and I thought it would be good for adults. However, if you're expecting a thrill, forget it. This roller coaster goes slow, and it does not have any steep lifts, turns, or dips. It's meant for children. (laughs) Haley is so offended by these people. I can't even describe to you. Just here, let uh, let me calm you down, okay? (sighs) 
These are the minority. The overall rate rating on Google reviews was 4.7 stars. Okay. So like out of those 2,400 reviews, like 2,200 of them were five star reviews. This is the minority of people. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's meant for children. You are at a children's bark. Well, I don't think it's meant for children. It isn't. Like, it's... My my thing is... And what, this is one of the things is I, I know I've said on the podcast before about it's coaster enthusiasts. Park. Well, and, like, just because it's not Steel Vengeance or Twisted Timbers or whatever doesn't mean it's a bad ride. You can have fun on a family coaster. Yeah. You just have to go in with that expectation. Okay. So whoever did this one, please do never, ever go to Dollywood... Never ever go to Disney <laughs> World or Disneyland. If you are looking for a thrill, go to Universal. Go to Sea World. Well, even go to, like, there's even stuff in Universal that's not. That's what I'm saying you know, though. Is it's like if you're looking for a thrill, then go find it somewhere else. Like this is not the place where you are like supposed to be hating on my love. Get over yourself. <laughs> so. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <sighs> you might need to cut this out. So. <laughs> Um, I, a I don't slowly know, just, ride roller coaster. This see, this see a thing. A lot of people just like not worth the wait. Pretty unimpressive, and it's like I don't know. I, I feel like you have to have an expectation. I'm get so heated if you keep going. So. <laughs> um. Okay, we're getting to the better ones Thank now. Thank you. Three stars. Thank always goodness. a fun ride to enjoy at Disney World. Childhood favorite. Yes. I don't know why that's only three stars. Sounds like a four star at yes. least. But anyway, that's how I feel about it too. Right. It's not going to knock your socks up, but it's fun. Yeah. And so enjoy it. Like, don't just, I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, three stars, good, but at the start point, you can hear a loud choo choo. It's a choo, train it's ride. It's choo choo. Not, I've never heard somebody say choo choo. This. <laughs> I don't, don't discriminate. <laughs> They're train noises. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's how their mom taught him. Doo, doo. I just find it funny. They disagree. <laughs> I loved this ride, but it made a weird noise at the beginning. You All just right. can't get over two, two. Three, three stars. <laughs> didn't go because of the queue. Saw it from the train and looked cool. What? You didn't even ride the ride. <laughs> this person basically said, oh, the line was too long for me to ride it. Yeah. But it looked cool. Three stars. <laughs> we always have these every week where someone just... Feels the burning desire in their soul to leave a review review for a ride that they didn't get on. on. (laughs) What? I don't understand. Four stars. The Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a very similar roller coaster to the Seven Dwarves ride. However, this one was made in 1980. They're way too similar. If you're on a time crunch, only pick one to go on. Um, Okay. I have mixed feelings on this. Yeah. It's like... If you're not an enthusiast about Disney World... And you're going during a busy time of the year. Then maybe yeah, you could pick one or the other. But. To me, they're completely different. They are completely different. But they're very similar, I feel, in like thrill level. Yes, I will agree with that. I would so, say Big Thunder is probably a little more thrilling than Seven Dwarves. It definitely throws you around, yeah. So like if you're looking for a coaster for your kids, definitely put them on Seven Dwarves Mine Train. Yeah. But, I mean, to totally skip one of them, I think, would be a mistake. Yeah. So. Uh, four stars, solid ride, not very long, considering the weight, though. Good for all ages. Didn't promote motion sickness. Promote motion? <laughs> Didn't promote motion sickness. I've never heard that phrase before. They're advertising that you can get sick on this, right? I, I guess. Didn't promote motion sickness. Here. That's a new one. Okay. Um, we'll skip. Oh, this is the, I think this is the last one. Fun, not as good as Top Thrill oh, Dragster. Oh, dear I've, Well, you didn't, look, look at the rest of this. Oh. Fun, not as good as Top Thrill Dragster. I've never ridden Top Thrill Dragster. <laughs> I'm out. Skip these <laughs> This movies. review doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what have you been? <laughs> Everything about this. Four stars. Fun, not as good as this ride. I'm cringing. Also, this ride I've never been on. <laughs> I'm what? literally cringing what? right now. Like, this I is... don't understand. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. I do have one more. That's funny. <laughs> this guy. Four stars. It was bumpier than a toad's butt. <laughs> I'm going to so use this from now on. <laughs> that is Big Thunder Mountain uh, reviews. So let's talk about the history of the rides. We're going to go back 
1971. All right, 1971. So we're at the very successful, successful opening of the Magic Kingdom in 1971. So My favorite place. Mm -hmm. So Imagineers were already well underway developing future additions to the park. Um, when the park opened, it featured many popular Disney rides. One that was not featured at Magic Kingdom was Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, they originally planned to do something called Western River Expedition in its place. So I'm curious to see how much of this story you know, just because of how much of a Disney buff you are. Let's but see. So this is Western River Expedition. I've got a couple other renditions. But the idea, um, so the, the attraction began life as a proposal of a historical recreation of the Western expansion of the United States. Um, Imagineer Mark Davis was the one that designed the attraction and the characters. Um, and basically he wanted this to be kind of, he also helped with Pirates of the Caribbean over at Disneyland. And this was what he wanted to do instead of Pirates of the Caribbean at the Magic Kingdom. So what's cool about this is actually three rides in one. So you can look down here. So this, um, red, I'm pretty sure the red section here, actually, no, let's, no, yeah, it is the red section. So this red section here would be um, like a boat ride, just like Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, so, okay. but it would be Western themed, you know, cowboys and Native Americans and ghost town, you know, all that kind of thing. This blue section would be like a, a mine train roller coaster. Okay. And then finally, there was also, uh, I think like a, this orange section was going to be like a river rapid ride to kind of like, um, like Cali River Rapids type of thing. Okay. And then also there would be hiking trails so that you could like hike up here, up here and there'd be like this little town over here that you could walk through and there'd be shops and stuff. So okay, it's kind of so like... I didn't know this because like I, I've never even heard of like a hiking trail kind of thing in, in Disney World. So this is new to me. Yeah. So the attraction was to have been located inside, outside and around an architectural feature known as Thunder Mesa Mountain, which is kind of this, you know, big mountain in the middle here. You can see there's some different renditions. So, like, here's this waterfall here. Um, it look, kind of looks like they may you may have had to take a boat over, kind of like Tom Sawyer Island type of thing. Yep. And then here, you can see here's the boat ride. There's, like, a splash down here. This actually, you'll know, see here, it says Splash Mountain, which is kind of interesting that huh. in, the, in the rendition. So, um yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind the ride. Here's a couple other artist renditions. So this would be part of the boat ride. You'd go past the scene where there's like a stagecoach being robbed by bandits. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like in this canyon. Here's what the mine train coaster would have looked like. Um, you see like rattlesnakes and stuff, you know, pretty typical. And then it even like the development of this ride got to the point that they actually like built like models and stuff. So you can see here's like a... Um, like a ghost town with like um, dancers and like here's a cowboy with his guitar and one up on the roof of this building like shooting his pistols. It almost reminds me of uh, oh, Fire in the Hole, Silver Dollar. A little bit, a little bit because it's kind of like that dark ride but like you're yeah. going through the kind yeah. of the old town. Um, you can see this is like a diorama of like how the ride would actually flow. Like they're actually planning out like this room and this room and like how it would go through. And then this is like a model of like the whole thing with like the hiking trails and like the splashdown and you know, all the cool. different rides. So a it was a hiking trail at Disney World. I know that like with uh, some of the resorts, like they have stuff like that, but not mm -hmm. in the park. Yeah. So. And it obviously wouldn't be like super yeah. you know, lengthy or whatever. You know, you, you wouldn't have people showing up with like backpacks and stuff to like, but it would be like you could walk up there and get like a really cool view of all the attractions and of the park and that itself. Cool. So yeah. Uh, let's see. So if it would if it was built, it would have been one of the most complex and expensive Disney attractions of its time. And it would have been housed in one of the largest show buildings ever created by the Disney company. Because basically this whole mountain would be a show building and like the boat would so like these um, kind of show uh, showrooms and stuff or like the different scenes are happening that's all housed underneath the actual mountain. So, so the whole thing is just like a bunch of rides combined into one. 
They're such um, geniuses. It is a, it's a really interesting concept. So here's the problem. Okay. <laughs> so when plans were being made for the Magic Kingdom, Imagineers had no plans to replicate Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, do you know the story of why? Do you know why they didn't want to do Pirates of the Caribbean at Magic Kingdom? Oh, I should know this. I literally <laughs> just listened to a podcast that your mom sent me, and it was the artist behind the costuming of Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And I should know this. I should do this. But I mean, I, it's fine. They may or may not have talked about I it. I can't but remember. Basically, either. what happened was they were like, oh, well, people in Florida hear about pirates all the time. Like, they're right next to the Caribbean. So they're like, they don't want it. They want Western stuff. But, like, because they're down here on the East Coast, they want stuff from the Wild West. Well, they opened the park and everyone was like, wait, where's Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> that was, like, the number one complaint they had for the first couple years of the Magic Kingdom was, where's Pirates? Where's Pirates? Where's Pirates? Huh. And so, basically, the Imagineers were like, uh. <laughs> and so they, like, just put this idea to the side and said, we got to put Pirates of the Caribbean in the park. So that's why Pirates of the Caribbean at Magic Kingdom is way shorter than it is at Disneyland because they basically were just scrounging this up together as fast as they could. So within, a f- you know, within 18 months of the park opening, they would start construction on Pirates of the Caribbean. You can see here's the sign out front saying opening Christmas of 1973. There's more construction here. So, okay. So my thought is, do you think they'll ever bring something like the trails back, especially with their talk of expanding with Coco and Encanto and I can't remember. There, they said there was um, another. Well, the, the villains area yes. that they talked about. Yes. I don't think so, and the reason is. I think the way people experience theme parks has changed since the 70s. Okay. Because when Disneyland and Magic Kingdom first opened, there was, like, a lot of, like, just exploring. Mm. Like, there were attractions, yes, but there was, okay. like, a lot of things. Kind of like Silver Dollar City, where yes. there's, like, things to do, do, but it's not a ride. Right. And I think nowadays people just expect rides, rides, right. rides. Okay. So, I really don't think something like that will ever come Okay. Back, so. I was just curious what your thoughts were. Okay. So they would finish Pirates of the Caribbean, and it would open in December of 1973, as expected. Um, However, the economic downturn of the early 70s and changes in Disney management kind of prevented the Western River Expedition from making any progress. So they would kind of talk about it, and they'd plan it, and then it would kind of get backtracked. And so a couple things would happen throughout the 70s. So in in the early 70s, after... Pirates was done. They started saying, okay, well, after Pirates is done, we'll um, do uh, Western River Expedition over in, you know, in this other area. Kind of where Tom Sawyer's Island is and Big Thunder Mountain is now. That's where they were going to put it. But then uh, they started working on Space Mountain. And at that point, Space Mountain was the most expensive roller coaster that had ever been built. So, like... All of their resources and all of the money was going into Space Mountain at that point. Yeah. In fact, Space Mountain was also part of to- what they called Tomorrowland Phase 2, which also included Carousel of Progress and the People Mover and Astro Orbiter. So basically all of the finances and all of the development was going to Tomorrowland at this point. And I even read that Imagineers weren't allowed to, to, to put any other resources into any other lands in the Magic Kingdom until the Tomorrowland project was completed. So, and then once Tomorrowland Phase 2 was complete in 75, they would start construction on Space Mountain and Disneyland. And then, although construction hadn't begun, they were kind of, they knew Epcot was, yeah, they knew Epcot was coming um, so Epcot that was has such a special place in my heart. I really like Epcot. <laughs> so they knew. I, I don't think I've ever seen pictures. I th- that was also when I was looking this up. I was like, I don't think I've ever seen Epcot construction pictures. I don't, I I don't know why, have. but that's really, really cool. Isn't that cool? So. so during this time frame, Mark Davis would work on other projects. Um, one of the people he would work with is legendary Imagineer Tony Baxter, which. I, Sure, you've heard that name before. Tony Baxter did a ton of stuff. But um, rather than scrapping the Western River Expedition idea altogether, 
Baxter suggested that the Mine Train Coaster be developed into a standalone attraction, kind of separate from everything else. So uh, they, they worried that West River Expedition was just too big for Disney to pay for. That like, you know, you're basically, I mean, adding three attractions at once, like it was just too big of a price tag to manage. So Baxter basically said, what if we just took one of those and, you know, made it its own thing so that it would be, you know, more affordable. So Disney officials liked the idea and greenlit the project for both Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom in 74, but the project would be delayed in favor of the construction of the aforementioned Space Mountains that went to both parks. So finally, in 77, construction began for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland. So the name actually came from the attraction that the ride replaced. So this is something I learned. So it replaced this ride, which was called uh, Walt Disney's Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland, which operated from 1960 to 77. And I guess it was just kind of like a, it was like a railroad tour. I think um, I remember Nature's Wonderland. Like, like hearing like, about yeah. that? Yeah. Like, I, I knew about Nature's Wonderland, but... So, there, it, you, basically, you would start in this the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge. And I guess when it first opened, you just went through, like, this section here. Basically, you went through the mountain and then through, like, these caverns here. Um, and then, eventually, they would expand it. So, you, like, went through this jungle section and then, like, this... Um, um, almost like um like a sahara section up here so it's kind of like and it was like all with animatronics and stuff it was kind of like a kilimanjaro safari but you know with just a train and hmm. with animal animatronics and stuff like that so interesting but like you were the idea was you were going through nature seeing all these formations and all these animals and it was just appreciation of the nature so this waterfall right here was called Big Thunder Waterfall. And then this one was called Little Thunder Waterfall. <laughs> so creative. So when they decided to, like when they were thinking of a name for the ride, they ended up taking that Big Thunder. And that's what, you know, that's where the name Big Thunder Mountain came from. Hmm. So there's your fun fact for the day. In fact, here's, I got a picture. That's Big Thunder Waterfall from back before the, the ride was constructed. So that is the... That is the namesake of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I mean, it is pretty. <laughs> Obviously man-made, but it's cool. So, so let's see. Um, Imagineers would work with Aerodynamics to develop and construct the coaster. Not only had Aero assisted on Matterhorn and Space Mountain, um, but they had also constructed several mine train style coasters, which we've talked about. Like, they did Cedar Creek Mine Ride at Cedar Point. They did Thunderation at Silver Dollar City. So... They had done, they've, all the mine train coasters that we've been on, that's aerodynamics. And so when Disney wanted assistance with their mine train coaster, essentially, they would, they had aerodynamics come in and do the project with them. So, and they had done work with them before. Um, Baxter took inspiration from Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah when he was designing what the, Makes sense. what it would look like. So. This is gorgeous. Like, I just, this picture is amazing. Ever, it's incredible. Have so, you ever been to Red Rocks? I've been to Red Rocks, but I have not been to uh, Bryce Canyon. So. I've not been to Bryce Canyon, but Red, the Red Rocks. Yeah, I have been to the Red Rocks area, so. Yeah. So, the coaster would also reuse old set pieces from the original Mine Train Natures Through Wonderland. So, the, I'll, I'll show you here, actually. So, there's like this little town right here that was the little town of Rainbow Ridge. This is where the train would take off. Well, they ended, ended up putting the station for Big Thunder Mountain right. right there. And they left a lot of the town there. So a lot of those buildings and stuff that are right next to the station, if you go on the Disneyland version of the ride, those are original set pieces from the mine train through Nature's Wonderland. Interesting. So that's cool. Uh, so here's some construction pictures from as they're constructing the ride in Disneyland. So you can see this is pretty early on, but this is this later on in the project. You can see... Some of the mountain has been painted, but some of it's still gray before they had actually painted it. And so that's kind of cool to see. You can see um, little pieces of coaster track here and there. To, to add realism to the attraction, Imagineers would obtain authentic mining equipment from abandoned mines in Nevada, Colorado, Minnesota, and Wyoming. So they just like found like abandoned mines and were like, 
hey, can we buy this? Uh, what I don't even know. Can we pickaxe. buy this mine? This pickaxe <laughs> or this mine cart off of you? And so, so a lot of the the mining equipment that you see while you're on the ride is actual like legitimate mining equipment. That's which cool. Is cool. Uh, the mountain was built with over sixty five hundred tons of steel. 4,600 tons of cement, and 4,000 gallons of paint. <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah, typical Disney. Um, not only would the attraction feature incredible theming, but Big Thunder Mountain would also become a technological advancement in the coaster industry. So the coaster was one of the first to utilize LIM technology, which is linear induction motors. So typically... I'm like, English, please. <laughs> I'll explain. So typically, coasters in this time frame... In order to get them going, you would either, when you left the station, you would either go down a drop to kind of get you on your way, or you would go straight into a chain lift. So that way you were easily either using a chain lift to pull the train out of the station or gravity. Big Thunder Mountain would actually has motors that would push the train out of the station. So that way there wasn't like any gravity involved. It could kind of just push the train a little and, you know, kind of push it out with some force to get the ride started. So... Not a launch, but kind of a similar idea. It's just not, like, super intense. It's more kind of just the the ride itself is giving the train a push to get started rather than using gravity or a chain lift. Uh, the motors would allow the train to leave the station without the use of gravity. Yep. So, as is customary for Disney, the coaster was also designed with high capacity in mind. With the use of three lift hills, not only is the ride over three minutes long, despite only being 50 feet tall... Uh, but this also allows for five trains to be on track at once, which is just, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> incredible. It's pretty amazing. Um, it allows with a ma- and so it has a max capacity of twenty four hundred riders per hour, which is <laughs> that's just ludicrous compared to you know we talked about Fahrenheit last week. It's only eight hundred and fifty riders per hour. It's almost three times as much on Big Thunder Mountain. So it also features a dual loading station. So that way, you know, you have this train leaving while this one's pulling in and you can load on one side while the other's unloading. Like it's, yeah, it's designed to just pump guests out as fast as possible. So um, as construction continued for Big Thunder Mountain, Disneyland construction would begin for Big Thunder Mountain and Magic Kingdom in January of 1979. So this is construction of Big Thunder Mountain on the other side of the country. Um, pretty similar. The the biggest difference um, is that... Well, actually, we'll get to that in a second. We'll, we'll talk about the differences between the four of them later on. Uh, but, I mean, same concept here. You can see... Please. So, okay. So as construction continued for Big Thunder Mountain in Disneyland, construction would begin for Big Thunder Mountain and Magic Kingdom in January of 1979 on the plot of land that had been reserved for Western River Expedition. So there's some pictures. Construction from Big Thunder Mountain back in 1979. So this is like early groundwork for the coaster track here. And then you can see this is kind of mid project. And then this is towards the end. So again, cool to see that like, you know, here's the rock work that hasn't been painted yet versus the rock work that has been painted. You can clearly see all the effort that takes to take that cement and make it look the, the way they want to. So it really is. It's pretty impressive. So uh, very well done. So which uh, should be expected for how much you're paying to go there. So. Back in California, after seven years of planning and $16 million later, which I will point out is $65 million nowadays, that's a lot of money for a roller coaster, so that's impressive. They really put the effort in. So, the original Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened on September 2nd, 1979, and continues to operate to this day. And here's pictures from, I think this is from early on. This is a more recent picture, but that's kind of early on in its opening. Uh, the ride experience is as follows. Leaving the outdoor station, trains enter a bat-infested tunnel, make a right-hand turn, then a left-hand turn before climbing the first lift hill, which takes trains through a cavern full of stalactites. Leaving the lift hill, the train drops away to the right, then levels out and makes a left-hand turn. 
The track then crosses under the second lift hill drop before making a right-hand turn. The sounds of coyotes can be heard howling as the train at the train as it dives into a cave. At the end of the tunnel, the train hits a trim brake, exits the tunnel, and climbs the second lift hill. At the top of the lift, an animatronic goat bleats as um, passing guests bleats at passing guests as the train drops away to the right. The goat also has a piece of dynamite in its mouth. It's very popular. <laughs> People say it's the best animatronic on Disney property. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, crosses under the lift hill and rises up into a downward spiraling clockwise helix. Leaving the helix, the train shoots through a small canyon, then down, drops down into a mining camp where it hits another trim break. The train then makes a left-hand turn, enters another tunnel, and climbs the third lift hill. As the train climbs the lift, the tunnel is blown up with dynamite, and artificial smoke is blasted in guest faces as the train crests the lift and exits the tunnel. The train then drops to the right towards the river, makes a right-hand turn, and passes through a short tunnel. After crossing over the drop, the train makes a left-hand turn as they pass through the ribcage of a T-Rex skeleton, hit a trim brake, then make a right-hand turn into the final brakes. So I do have this commercial from the right when it opened so i think this is from 1979 like right as it opened at disneyland so okay um I got, why do i have no sound you always mess with this i don't i just turned up the volume why do i have no sound i have no idea why i have no sound So I have this commercial. I'm pretty sure this is from, yeah, so from 1979, so right after the ride opened, or right before, I don't know, somewhere in that time frame, so. Each force has unleashed the runaway flying trains of Big Thunder Mountain, but every day, Big Thunder strikes. Big Thunder strikes. <laughs> I love we we've definitely come to the realization as we watch all these old commercials that that like back in the seventies and eighties like their entire marketing campaign was just to seem like really intense and really scary and like big thunder you know and just like nowadays a big thunder mountain commercial would be like come and have fun on big thunder you know like experience the magic and like then yeah. <laughs> back then it was like only at Disneyland. It's Red like if you dare. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's just interesting to see that difference. Uh, the coaster has been praised by millions of guests for being less intense than Matterhorn and Space Mountain, but still a lot of fun, much smoother, and great theming, as Disney is known for. Meanwhile, back in Florida, construction was still underway. While the layout is nearly identical, they're just mirrored. So if you take a left-hand turn on one, no, you make a right-hand right. turn yeah. on the other. Okay. Uh, the design of Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom was inspired by Monument Valley in Arizona. So if we go to this picture here, uh, there we go. So that's Monument Valley, also very gorgeous, but very different from Bryce Canyon in, in Utah. So this mountain in particular kind of reminds me of Big Thunder Mountain, actually. So... It's kind of interesting, but that's that was the idea. Is they wanted to take something. Is this also what Cars? Yes, this is Monument say... Valley is where Cars, the the movie Cars, is based out of. So, okay. so you can kind of see that similarity, huh? Uh, let's see. The attraction is also twenty five percent larger at the Magic Kingdom. The mountain is eighty nine feet taller, so a lot lot bigger, and the coaster is two miles per hour faster. So not not a huge difference. 
Um, however, it was constructed by a different company, which is kind of interesting. So Aerodynamics helped with the one in Disneyland. Well, since they were busy on that project, they actually hired Vacoma to do the one at the Magic Kingdom. So they have the same layout, just mirrored, but they're built by two different companies, which is kind of interesting. And also, it would be the first time Disney would work with Vacoma, and ever since Big Thunder Mountain, Vacoma has built every single Disney roller coaster since then. So that was kind of the start of their partnership with that company, and Vacoma's mm. done. It's been, well, with one exception. Slinky Dog Dash was done by a different company, I guess. I think everything else they've done since then has been Vacoma, though, if I'm remembering properly. At least in Disney World. I'm not as familiar with the, the foreign parks. but so, Even Tron? Uh, even Tron. Yeah, Tron, Cosmic Rewind, all of them have been uh, Vacoma. Rock and Roller Coaster. Interesting. Yep, so Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, all of them have been Vacoma. Um, let's see. Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom would also bring its own technological advancements. While most coasters up until this point had been designed and planned by hand, Big Thunder Mountain would be one of the very first roller coasters to be designed by computer software. Um, the result is a much smoother experience because, like, before that, you just have to do all these calculations and, you know, figure everything out by hand and calculators, but it's, like, all done on paper. Once you can plug all that into a computer, it makes it so much easier to just crunch the numbers in the computer and, you know, basically build your whole coaster in there. And then use that to take that to the factory and build the pieces that you need. So that's why so coasters post-1980 are like way, way smoother than anything that was before that. Because computer technology just allowed it to be a much, more, uh, a much simpler process. So after almost two years of construction, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad would open at the Magic Kingdom on November 15th, 1980. And so this is, so yeah, there's our, our Disney World magic, or at the Magic Kingdom, our Big Thunder Mountain. So, but I guess it's bumpier than a toad's butt, so. Bumpier than a toad's butt. I disagree. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, even with this ride, like, your mom does not like roller coasters. It's true. But she will get on this ride. Mm -hmm. So if that speaks anything, I say, like, this is one of the better rides in Disney World. Well, and, and to be fair, yes, it is a tamer ride. It's not a thrill. Like, it's not going to, like I said, knock your socks off. But that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Right. So it is a lot of fun. Um, some notable differences, other than what we've already mentioned, that, you know, the track is mirrored. It's designed after a different rock formation, so they're painted differently. Um, this one's a little bit bigger. Um, the other noticeable difference is that indoor, so the station is indoors and the queue is indoors um, here in the Magic Kingdom. Disneyland, both the station and the queue are outdoors, which people do not like very much because that's very hot. <laughs> right. Um, that's one of the few gripes people have about the one at Disneyland versus Disney World. But, um, and then the only other thing is uh, during the f final lift hill on um, this version, you, you've probably noticed this, but during that final lift hill, um, the, the train, uh, the track actually banks back and forth to give you like the simulation of an earthquake, although the other special effects that are in there don't work properly anymore. So that effect isn't, <laughs> it's, it's not as good as it used to be, but that is something that, that they did differently on this one. Let's see. Uh, both Big Thunder Mountains became a huge success at their respective parks and became a more family-friendly coaster option for those that were scared off um, by Space Mountain or the Matterhorn in Disneyland. All right, so before long, Disney was expanding into other areas of the world, and so Tokyo Disneyland would open in 1983 with Space Mountain as the star attraction. Um, however, due to popular demand, it wouldn't be long before our Imagineers would be adding a third Big Thunder Mountain in the Japanese park, opening on July 5th, 1987. So here's pictures of the um, Tokyo Disneyland version. Um, uh, it's designed to look similar to the Florida one. I think you know, it's pretty obvious in the, just the way the, the um, colors are and all that. I like this little, um, like the area of like uh, hot springs right here. It looks really nice. Um, also, this section right here is like, the final drop of the ride, and it drops through the um, 
through the, the, the rib cage of the T Rex, yeah. and there's a little splashdown section at the bottom of the hill here, which is actually kind of cool. So that's cool. I also I liked this picture just because it shows how much they really have built this to be like a you know they built it to follow the terrain of the that they built. So it's ingenious. Like I love the creativity there. Like so cool. Yeah, it just looks looks really great. So and like I said, a good train coaster. So and then um, as far as differences there's pretty similar to the Florida ride there are a couple differences in the layout um, instead of going through the flooded town of tumbleweed the track makes a left and dives into a cave which is similar to what the California version does um, and then like I mentioned this drop off of into the splashdown at the end is uh, kind of different from the other ones too so aesthetically speaking it looks like the one in Florida so then, not long after, Disney would begin construction on Euro Disney, which eventually became Disneyland Paris. Um, learning from popular demand of the attraction, Imagineers would include Big Thunder Mountain as an opening day attraction, however, excluded Space Mountain from the lineup. Which, there's a whole other backstory we could get into there, but that ended up almost killing the park, not having Space Mountain there. And eventually, when they built Space Mountain at Disneyland Paris, that's kind of what saved the park. So, anyway, we'll talk about that more whenever we do a Space Mountain episode. So Sounds good to me. Um, the fourth and final version of Big Thunder Mountain would open at Disneyland Paris on April 12th, 1992. And this is, let's see, this is the Disneyland Paris version of the ride here. So, what's most unique about this one um, is from a layout standpoint... Um, it's primarily based on the Florida version, but Paris's version is unique as it's situated on an island in the middle of the rivers that of Far West. It's crazy. Yeah, so it's kind of where, usually where Tom Sawyer's island would be, that's where Big Thunder Mountain is on the Paris for, in the Paris ride. So, huh. um, so let's talk about it. So guests board the trains at a station on the mainland, and unlike the other versions, the train on this version are painted to look weathered and aged, so I don't know what the decision was there, why, but the other ones, they're painted to look like brand new, and here they're painted to look like kind of worn down and like um, beat up and torn down, and like, you know, weathered and aged, as, as it says here. That's really cool. Um, immediately upon leaving the station, trains dive into a tunnel that transports them under the rivers of the far west to the island where the ride is located. So you so can it see goes underground. It goes under under the ground under the river. So here's so, cool. so here's the blueprint of the ride. So the station is over here. So this is where like you this is where the queue is and everything. So you you um, board the trains here, and then this dotted line here is where the tunnel is that goes under the river. And then mm -hmm. you come up, and the whole rest of the ride is on the island here, just as normal. And then once the, towards the end of the ride, you come back underneath the water here and back up at the station there. So. You know, I've always wanted to visit Disneyland Paris, but now I'm like, I just, anytime we talk about Disneyland Paris, I'm like, okay, now I really want to go. Okay, now I really want to go. Okay, now I really, really, really want to go. And yeah. so it's just like, this is just an added bonus mm -hmm. that it's like, that would be such a neat ride to go on i think yeah it's really impressive and i i love and just like the, the aesthetic of it like um if we go back to uh yeah if we go back to this like just the way it looks it's just beautiful. situated on this island it it's looks very so cool so and the cool thing is when it's on an island like that you can walk around it and like get pictures from different angles so um very cool so uh let's see most of the layout is the same as the florida version um, but other than, you know, going underneath, you know, the tunnels and the, the end. But um, the only other thing is I know towards the end of the ride, um, you can actually see it right here, is there's actually this section toward, like, it goes around the edge and there's this little splashdown section here, kind of like the Tokyo Disneyland. And actually the original version has a splashdown now too. So I don't know why the Magic Kingdom doesn't, or maybe doesn't, I just never noticed, but... Um, but yeah, then after that, it goes back under the water. And like I said, um, there's actually a fourth lift hill on this one because by the time, really? well, because by the time it gets back to the station, it's not quite carrying enough speed to get back up 
up from under the river and get into the, the station. It. Okay. So there's just a fourth lift hill to kind of help it get back it's into the like station. It's not like King's, King's Island, <laughs> little tiki's. No, there's no, like, it there's... doesn't feel anticlimactic like Adventure Express does oh. at King's Island. <laughs> so anticlimactic. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, this version of the ride is also 20 feet taller and 4 miles per hour faster than any of the others. And like I said earlier, it's widely considered to be the best of the four. Uh, not just from a ride experience standpoint, but from a theming and storytelling perspective. So I mentioned that one of the four had a more in-depth story. Um, this, The way Disneyland Paris is laid out, uh, when they built it, they took a lot of inspiration from Mark Davis's original Western River Expedition. And so the, the, his whole thing was based on the town of Thunder Mesa. That was kind of what it was called. So they actually took that idea and implemented it into the entire frontier land of Disneyland Paris. And so the town that you're in when you're in frontier land in Disneyland Paris is actually called Thunder Mesa. Like you can even see signs that say, welcome to Thunder Mesa. I like that. Um, and the story of Big Thunder Mountain is tied to the story of Phantom Manor, which is like their version of Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. Mansion. Um, I knew that. I, I knew that Thunder Mountain and, and the Haunted Mansion there were kind of like coinciding with mm-hmm. each other. So Yeah, so so let's see. It says, so Phantom Manor, which is Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, the Phantom Canyon scene is derived from a planned show scene from the town of Dry Gulch at Western River Expedition. Um, and there are also other similar um, aspects like the bank robbery, the showgirl, and the bartender. So it's kind of interesting that, um, and from what I read is Western River Expedition is kind of like this legendary thing that the Imagineers talk about. It's kind of like this inside joke among them. I'm like, well, hey, why don't we put such and such from Western River Expedition in there? And so like over time, there's been little ideas they've pulled from West River Expedition and implemented them into other attractions throughout the Disney area. This is the most notable, though, as they took like this whole town of Thunder Mesa and said, let's base the entire Frontierland story on that. And it ties into Phantom Manor and Big Thunder Mountain, and they're kind of all tied together into this one story, which is cool. So, so here is an overhead view of, oh, sorry, this is, yeah, so this is Big Thunder Mountain. There's another picture of it, just really picturesque on the river there and then here's phantom manor in the same little section of frontier lane there and then this is an overhead view of all four of the attractions and this is to scale so you can kind of see how big the the individual um, themed areas are so you know disneyland's is the smallest and then magic kingdom and <clears throat> uh, disneyland paris are about the same as far as how much space they take up and then tokyo disneyland has a larger area of land that it's themed to so anyway but as far as the ride size the rides are all pretty much the same except paris is a little bit bigger and longer just because of the underwater tunnels so so very cool um you can, and then again you can clearly see how three at least three are all red versus the tan that's over here in the oh, yeah. disneyland's version so interesting yeah. i like how different disneyland is yeah california so one thing I also learned watching um, this video, um, this guy, um, his uh, he's a YouTuber, his name's El Toro Ryan, and he does videos kind of explaining like the, how the coasters work, like the, the, not necessarily the ride experiences, but more about like how they operate, like the operational um, procedures of the coasters, which for a nerd like me is really cool to watch these videos and see like how these operate and other people have just been like, well, I'm uh, glad that you said it and I didn't. So. <laughs> but one thing I learned that was cool is because he was talking mostly about the Magic Kingdom version. So Disney kind of has this thing where they never want the storage buildings for the coaster trains to be visible to the guests. No, I knew that. Okay. Most, most parks couldn't care less. But Disney, they're never visible. Well, the way that the, the Big Thunder Mountain is located in the Magic Kingdom the only way that they could find to, to build like a storage location for them. So here's the right here. This is like the station down here. So Splash Mountain's like right here. Makes sense kind of where we're looking. The storage building is this building right here. <clears throat> and so it's on the other side of the railroad from the coaster. So when they have to take a train off, 
you can see there's this little piece of coaster track that comes right through here and through the trees. And so that when they take it off, it comes back this way. They have to take it across the railroad and then up into the storage building back here. What? <laughs> so I found that kind of fascinating, just like how they have to, all, all these procedures Disney goes through just to make sure the, the magic isn't ruined, you know? <laughs> so it was impressive. So that's kind of cool. And I bet if you looked at these, I bet a lot of these are probably the same. Same. Um, but... I just, the only reason I know that one for sure is because that was the video that I watched. He explained how That's that happened. That's so, so cool. All right. One other thing I, I will men mention in passing, I won't go into too much detail. There, there was an incident on the Disneyland version of the attraction in 2003 um, where there was a, a train that derailed. And basically, I, like I said, I won't go into too much detail, but Disneyland um, ultimately came to the conclusion that it was their fault what had happened was is when there was maintenance being done on one of the trains uh there were two bolts that weren't tightened properly and when the maintenance or whoever was in charge of that went to check it off the manager the manager is supposed to go and double check their work and the manager didn't so it was kind of a perfect storm where one guy didn't do his job properly and then another guy didn't do their job properly so <laughs> It was, it was a bad situation, and there was someone that passed away from the incident, and so it was a bad deal, and like I said, I won't go into major, you know, I won't go into all the details, but I will say that in the end, Disney implemented major changes in policies of how the rides are maintained, and Disney was sued by, you know, the family of the person killed and a bunch of other people, and they settled them all outside of court, and the monetary values are undisclosed, but... Uh, they did say this was um, their what the the park's spokesperson said. Uh, we all deeply regret that the tragic accident occurred and are terribly saddened by the grievous pain that this caused the family. So, so those things are unfortunate, and I, I hate bringing them up, but I will say that like they are really uncommon. The only reason we you know hear about them is because of how uncommon they are. Like it seems like we hear about them once or twice a year. Well, you have to think about the thousands and thousands and thousands of coaster rides that are given every single day without incident. So right. So, but it is important that when they happen, like the park takes responsibility and makes changes. And so I appreciate that the, the park did take ownership for it in this case. That's good. Yeah. They usually try and hide that kind of stuff. Yeah, so agreed. They... Agreed. So. Took responsibility there. So a few years later, Imagineers would still be finding inspiration from Davis's Western River expedition. So we talked about how it's kind of like legend among the Imagineers. Well, when they were developing Expedition Everest, they found that one of Mark Davis's ideas for the mine train coaster in Western River expedition was that it would have a backward section. And so they kind of just took that idea and said, let's put that on Everest. And so even, you know, <clears throat> 35 years after he had initially had this idea for West River Expedition, like Imagineers are still pulling things from it and putting it into the rides that they're building today. So, so that's interesting. Um, let's see. Over the next several decades, all four Big Thunder Mountains would continue to throw millions of guests every year. No major changes would occur until 2013. At this point, the original coaster at Disneyland was becoming extremely rough. Um, if you remember, this was that was the only one that was designed by hand rather than by computer. So it wasn't as smooth as the other three were. And so Disney would end up closing Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland um, for 14 months for a major overhaul. So here are just some of the kind of the construction pictures. One of the things that they did that was really impressive, they replaced the entire track. So like so cool. none of the original track remained. So you can see here, there's, you know, them bringing in some of the new track. So even though the old word, old one was built by um, Aerodynamics, they actually had this other company, I think Dynamic Attractions, it was called, that came in and redid all the coaster track. Um, they also got new trains, new scenery, and the most notable change that people have talked about is new special effects, including um, a projection mapped finale on the third um, lift hill. So and that's why you hear a lot of people say that like Disneyland is like one of the better Big Thunder Mountains is because 
Um, it, it, you can see in this picture here, it has like projection mapping of like dynamite being lit on the walls as you're going up that final lift hill, which is really cool. Um, and so people have been begging for Big Thunder Mountain at Disney World to get the same treatment. Hmm. And it hasn't. <laughs> so. They've got a lot of big projects going on, but maybe for when they update that <coughs> area of the park, they might give it I up. mean, maybe. It's kind of a bummer because they have done refurbs for Big Thunder Mountain several times since the Disneyland one got the 2013 refurb. Like, even during COVID, they closed after, you know, COVID um, kind of... The, the park shut down, and then when the parks reopened, Big Thunder Mountain didn't because they had just decided to do a refurb while everything was shut down. But they didn't do any projection mapping. And, like, there was a point where they actually added, like, interactive games and stuff in the queue for Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom. But they didn't do anything with the projection mapping on the lift. So, you know, all these things they've done for the Disneyland version, they've kind of skimped on that for the Magic Kingdom version. And I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know why. So... Um, though the refurb was long and extensive, the ride has been praised for the improvement, and many, and like I said, many fans of Disney World are eagerly awaiting the same refurb, especially because in 2016, the Disneyland Paris version got the same, basically the same refurb, minus the complete retrack. So the track stayed the same, but they did add the projection mapping to the Disneyland Paris version. Hmm. So on top of the ride experience for that one, it also has the cool new special effects that this one has. So, so cool. Disneyland Paris, yeah, pretty much people Trumps. always say <laughs> that was the best one. All right, so I have one really weird and unique fact for you now. Shoot. You're ready for this? You're ready, ready for this? to be mind blown. You're not ready for this. <laughs> so in the October 2016 Journal of the American Osteopathic Association, a paper entitled Validation of a Functional Pyelocalocal <laughs> Renal Model for the Evaluation of Renal Calculi Passage While Riding a Roller Coaster was published. The paper's author, Dr. Wardinger, found that patients of his had passed kidney stones while at, after riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Walt Disney World on vacation. I actually did know this. Did you know this? That's really funny. <laughs> So here's the study. Here's what's really... So he had heard multiple people say this, that after they rode Big Thunder Mountain. So he was like, okay, that's weird. Yes. So he decided to no, do this. No, I knew this. Yeah. I knew this because we've actually talked about this before. That's true. That's true. So I, for those of you who don't know, I, I had kidney stones a couple years ago. <laughs> And like, my, let's just go to Disney World. Well, my doctor is the one that mentioned this. That was the first time I'd heard yes. about Big Thunder Mountain and kidney yes. stones was my doctor oh mentioned my it. Because I said something about Silver Dollar City, and he was like, oh, I wonder if Outlaw Run's the same as Big Thunder Mountain. And then that's how this all came about. That's too So for those of you who aren't familiar, so this was the study. So they basically took um, 60, uh, it says 60 renal calculate rides were analyzed. So I don't know if that was 60 people that had kidney stones they put on a roller coaster or they just took 60 rides, I'm not sure. But basically, they found that people that put they put them on Big Thunder Mountain, 70% of them, they passed the kidney stone, with results varying depending on which row they were in. And so they were like, okay, well, maybe that's just a roller coaster thing. Maybe it's not Big Thunder Mountain. Well, they also put people on Space Mountain and Rock and Roller Coaster, and they could not get 70%. Like, it just, they could not get to that number. It was a much lower number, much lower percentage of people that passed the kidney stone. So, for some reason, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Walt Disney World, like, 70% of kidney stone patients will pass the kidney stone if they ride it. There you go. (laughs) And And this isn't just, like, people, like, just... Making a guess, like this was published in the Journal of Osteopathic that's Medicine absolutely. as an actual that's like, crazy. study that they that's did. Literally crazy. <laughs> it's pretty wild. The, so the doctor tested the result with the permission of Disney with a 3D model of a kidney by writing. Oh, so that's what it, it wasn't people that had kidney stones. They just used a 3D model of a kidney that kind of simulated it. Um, interesting. Yeah, seventy percent of the time the kidney stone was passed. That is crazy. <laughs> so there's your really weird and fun fact. Oh, so I got no newspaper articles today, but I did bring something from the Journal of Osteopathic Medicine. There you go. <laughs> so, um, 
all four coasters continue to operate to this day and have given hundreds of millions of rides over a collective 150 years of operation. It doesn't seem to matter how old they are, the Big Thunder Mountain coasters continue to be a Disney staple and will almost certainly be thrilling millions of guests for years to come. And that is the history of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at various Disney parks. <laughs> so, have any final questions, any final thoughts? I don't know. Do you want to know where the hidden Mickey is? Oh, is there? There is. There's one hidden Mickey on the. I don't know about the other rides at Disneyland's, but like at the Disney World, there is one. Oh, I don't know where the hidden Mickey is. It's like there's a big like wagon wheel, and then there's like two. Oh, is it like towards the end of the ride mm-hmm. on the right side? Yeah. Okay, that does sound familiar now. Yeah. Okay. And then there's so the hidden Tinker Bell that you know yeah, about. Yeah, in the in the rock on the rock wall in the exit queue. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. There's your there's your fun fact. There's my fun, fun fact as general <laughs> public that's a big fan of Disney World. Yeah, so. So. Well that is the history of the Thunder Mountain Railroad. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the podcast. Um, as we mentioned at the top of the episode, be sure to follow us here on Spotify or wherever you may be listening so that you're updated and notified every time we post a new episode. Um, you could also go and follow us on social media. We are over at Twitter and Instagram. Um, our handle is just at Airtime Traveler. Um, we're you know, having conversations over there about you know news and things that are happening in the industry. So be sure to go over there and check us out. Um, I also thought about having some contests and some, you know, maybe some opportunity to win some prizes in the in the coming future. So be sure that you're following us over on social media so that you don't miss out on those. And um, I think that's going to do it for, for this week's episode. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Miss Disney fan? Go to Disney World. Don't listen to the bad reviews. It's not as bumpy as a toad's butt, regardless of what people say. <laughs> I'm totally using that phrase. Bumpy as a toad's butt. That's a new one. I've never Bumpier heard that than toad's butt. <laughs> oh my gosh. And don't, and don't have your phone out while riding the ride. <laughs> it's for any ride. That That is true, so... And give and give Big Thunder Mountain the credit it deserves. No, Amen. it's not top thrill dragster, but it's not supposed to be. <laughs> so the end. The end. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in to uh, this episode of Airtime Traveler, and we will see you in the next episode.